Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we are going to be looking at bond dissociation enthalpies or, en or energies. Those both are interchangeable. All right, so in terms of this, we are going to, let me stand off to the side for a minute so you can see it. Here is the reaction that we're given and the actual, <laughs> we never asked the question. Here's the question. Calculate Delta H reaction for, all right, there it is. That even works a little bit better. All right, so we are calculating the enthalpy of the reaction for this particular reaction. We have a list here of some possibly useful bond dissociation energies. And these are in kilocalories per mole because that's more common in organic chemistry. Um, but we can convert to kilojoules per mole. I'll show you how to do that in the end. Okay, you're, if you're in Gen Chem 1, your test will have kilojoules per mole. So realize they'll be slightly different from these, but that's okay. Okay, so in terms of doing this, what you need to do at a bare minimum is you must draw out the, this entire reaction in terms of Lewis dot structures to figure out how those particular atoms are bonded to one another. That's just kind of a beginning piece that has to happen. And so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so you have um, two C's here. So if you're looking at the Lewis dot structures, maybe you would go about doing it the way we do most Lewis dot structures, where you calculate the total number of valence electrons you have from each of the atoms, right? I have four electrons from each C, and there are two C's two electrons total from the H's, because there's one electron from each H, and two H's, I ran out of room, so I condensed it a bit. That gives me a grand total of 10 electrons. Or if you just happen to know that carbon makes four bonds around it at all times, the two carbons have to be the central atom, the central atoms, I should say. So those are my two carbons. I can only have a single bond to each of the H's, and those H's, whatever's left, other than, this, than the central atom, you would evenly distribute amongst the multiple central atoms you have when you're doing this in Gen Chem 1. And so if carbon always has four bonds around it, then the last three must be between the two carbons to make eight around each carbon. Okay. For Br2, you can also do that. Let's do it like this. Br2, each of these comes with seven valence electrons and there has to be a bond between them. There's no central atom here, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, this one, the central atoms again are carbons, right? Carbons, and then you have, you're gonna evenly distribute everything else around those two carbons. And here we go. Lo and behold. you get this as your answer. Again, you could have started by counting up the total number of valence electrons and making sure in the end you have the same number of valence electrons in your structure. So if we had 10 valence electrons here to begin with, I should have two, four, six, eight, ten 10 valence electrons in the end. And what you're recognizing there, in addition to everything else I've been talking about, is that each of those lines contains two valence electrons. All right, so here's what we have. We have these, we have to draw out the Lewis dot structures of these. You do not have to draw out the Vesper structures simply because you only need to know the bonding between the atoms. You don't have to know um, what they look like in three dimensions necessarily. Helps in organic chemistry, but not a requirement. Okay, so in terms of this, what I want to do is I want to do a rack and stack of what kinds of bonds I have going on on the reactant side. Remember, I have two of these. And what kinds of bonds are going on on the product side. And then I need to look at my energies and multiply those out. Okay, so here's what we got. In terms of the reactants, that's this side, right? Reactants. I have carbon to hydrogen bonds. And notice I have one here and one here, so I have two of those, right? I have one carbon triple bonded to carbon bond, and I have two, are you gonna go underneath here? Yeah. 
I think I can. Bromine singly bonded to bromine bonds. Okay, so if I wanted to do this as I always deal with my enthalpies, I could multiply each of these numbers corresponding to the bond that I'm looking at by the number of that particular bond on that side. And then the last piece is that it's exactly opposite the idea of the standard molar enthalpies of formation. Standard molar enthalpies of formation, signs were given. And so therefore, you did products minus reactants, final minus initial. Here, you're going to do the same kind of idea as standard molar enthalpies of formation. But in the end, you're going to do reactants minus products. And that's for an entirely different reason, uh, mainly because there's no sign convention on any of these. These are all positive. And we'll talk about that, why that's so important that we do reactants minus products in the end. OK. Here, if I want to do the same thing, I can rack and stack what kind of bonds I have. I have carbon to hydrogen bonds again. And notice I have two of those. That didn't change. I have carbon to bromine bonds. And how many of those do I have? One, two, three, four, right? And then I have a carbon to carbon single bond, OK? So in terms of the products and the reactants, if you want to just multiply these out, you could certainly say, OK, carbon to hydrogen bonds are 99. Each of those is 99 kilocalories per mole. And there are two of them. So what is that equal to? I could say for the triple bond, the 200, and I'm going to multiply that by 1. And then I could do bromine. That's 46. And I have two of those. OK? I could certainly do that. And that would be totally fine. Notice, by the way, that carbon double bonded to carbon never is used. It's just to kind of compensate, just in case you drew it out wrong. Make sure you draw it out right. All right, so I could do the two carbon to hydrogen bonds here as well. The four carbon to bromine bonds, that's 68. And the one carbon singly bonded to carbon bond, that's 83. But you'll notice something. Before I get into doing this and actually multiplying these out, you'll notice that the two carbon to hydrogen bonds are exactly the same on both sides. And so why would you go ahead and why would you go by this kind of idea and calculate it all out only to add it in and then subtract it out later? That doesn't make any sense. So in terms of that, if you see something that's the same on both sides in your rack and stack of the products versus the reactants, cross it out. You don't need it. OK, it makes your life a little simpler to do that. OK, so now I'm going to do my 200 here. I'm going to put actually multiply these out, you know, the 2 times the 46. And then I'm going to add them together. Right, I do have room. Awesome. I have room underneath. I hardly ever have that. Awesome. All right, so there's my 292. And then I have my 4 times 68, which is 272. And I have 1 times 83, which is 83. I'm going to add these together over here. Plus 83. And that gives me 355. Okay. Like I said before, this is equivalent, this right here, so let me, let me rewrite this so that I'm not writing at the bottom of the screen here over and over and over again. Mm, so pretty. OK, so in terms of this, while I'm erasing, we have now the sum of the reactants and the sum of the products. And that is fantastic. That's exactly the same kind of process that we had for standard molar enthalpies of formation. It's the exact same kind of idea. The big difference here is what we do with those sums. OK? So now I have, right, I have the sum of the reactants. Ooh, I'm getting squeaky which is equal to 292, 
kilojoules or kilocalories per mole, sorry, and the sum of the re of the products here. I had to switch. I'm sorry. I would have done it both in blue, but it was so squeaky. And that's 355. Now, what are we going to do last? Well, what we do last is exactly the opposite we did with standard molar enthalpies of formation. If you remember with standard molar enthalpies of formation, let me run over here for a minute. When I had the delta H's of formation like this, what I did in the end is I took the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. And I did this to reflect the idea that H is a state function and I could do final minus initial. That's why I did that. And remember that these formation constants basically had these formation energy, I should, energies, I should say, were, had signs available to them. Okay, so basically they had a sign if energy was released in the midst of making that particular compound, or they had a sign that was a, that was a negative, by the way, if it was released, and if it was required, then it was a positive. That is fabulous. The problem comes, folks, in that none of the bond energies ever have signs. And so your last piece is actually the opposite. And the reason why it's the opposite is because at this point, what you're reflecting in the midst of this sign convention is you are reflecting the fact that bond making releases energy and bond breaking requires energy. Okay, I'm going to write this up here because this is such an important concept for you to understand that I'm going to actually write out what I just said. Okay, so why are you doing it differently? Because bond breaking, which is what happens on the reactant side, requires energy. and bond making, which is what happens on the product side, releases energy. And if you ever have a moment to yourself of like, why in the world is that true? Just realize that one of the ongoing themes in the midst of our chemistry discussions is that no bonds are ever made. Nothing ever bonds unless it's going to go to lower energy in the end, a more stable configuration, a lower energy kind of, um, a lower energy state, we would say. Okay. So in terms of that, why in the world would anything ever bond unless it goes to a lower energy state and it's going to do that by releasing energy? That's the question. Okay, just throwing it out there. So in terms of this, what we're going to do is we are going to simply put a minus between these two, right? So my delta H of reaction when I'm doing bond dissociation energies is going to be the exact opposite. The sum of the reactants minus the sum of the products, and that is simply to reflect that the bonds that are broken are on the reactant side and the bonds that are made are on the product side and when something releases energy we put a minus in front of it which is why there's a minus in front of the products okay so my last step here my delta H of reaction is going to be 292 minus 355, which indeed will show this as an exothermic process, which is a good thing. And I get negative 63 kilocalories per mole in the end. If you ever have kilocalories, by the way, and you're like, well, actually, I kind of need kilojoules per mole because that's what I need. Realize that if, right, if 
the conversion factor between joules and calories, let me erase all of this, if my conversion factor between, and I'll erase only some of it because I don't want to spend forever doing it. Woo! We'll do it fast. Beautiful glass. Fastly erased. Fastly? Did I just say that? <laughs> Sorry. All right, so if you ever have kilocalories, if you have this negative 63 kilocalories per mole, and you're like, hey, I need kilojoules per mole, because that's what is required of me, then recognize that if one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules, then guess what? One kilocalorie, ooh, kilocalorie, is also going to be equal to 4.184 kilojoules. You just are basically multiplying both of those by a thousand. Yeah? Hopefully it makes sense. So in terms of that, one kilocalorie, 4.184 joules, or kilojoules, sorry, and you can get this in kilojoules, so, which is about right. It's about, in kilojoules per mole, this same number, this negative 63 kilojoule, or kilocalories per mole, is about negative 264 kilojoules per mole. And there you go. And that's about indicative of what that reaction should be. And so, there we are. Until we meet again, I bid you adieu.